Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Uh, it is December the 30th. It's around 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Um, I don't know when uh, Kenya is going to uh, upload this video, but uh, in case you are getting it uh, after the new year or before the new year, I just want to wish everybody uh, a very happy and healthy and wonderful um, new year, right? New year. Hopefully uh, everyone uh, is good. Hopefully everybody is healthy. And that's the most important part. That is your foundation uh, and happiness obviously is a main cog uh, in your life. So if you are brand new to the channel, just kind of find this by accident a couple of days uh, before uh, 2024. Thank you. Thank you very much for your viewership. Uh, the only thing we ask is like, share, subscribe. Takes a second. It uh, helps out the channel's growth. And hopefully we can continue to add um, more value uh, than uh, you had expected. Hopefully you even come close. So that's that. So as everybody knows, if you've been a loyal watcher for years or a loyal following along for years, um, you know, I'm not in the prediction business, okay? Um, I'm not that smart. I don't think anybody uh, is that smart. Coming off of uh, a 36% uh, or 34%, whatever it was, decline in the NASDAQ 100 2022, I, I don't believe uh, there's a single human being out there uh, that could have thought um, and even imagined uh, the year that 2023 uh, was to bring. And, and these were, you know, these were the, you know, these were the final tallies. You have the NASDAQ up 54% for the year. It's astonishing. Uh, the S&P up 24% for the year. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a little bit of a lagger, but still nearly a 14% gain uh, in 2023, which is absolutely uh, staggering. So here's kind of how we begin, right? Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of people uh, make videos or make predictions what they think is going to happen in 2024. I have no idea. Okay. I, I really don't. I have no idea. I take it day by day, uh, trade by trade. One day I'm long Tesla like I was uh, Wednesday into Thursday session. The next day, if you watch the video on Thursday, we were watching for a uh, potential 10-day um, breakdown of Tesla. As you can see, it happened. We'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, but the point is, you know, I'm very, very, um, I'm very, very seasoned in this business as far as trying to pretend uh, you're smarter than you are, and we're not. Okay, I've I've always pro pro proclaimed that I'm the king of the idiots, and I stand by that. Okay, um, I could only go as far as the previous night's research, and that's the way I'm going to uh, continue to attack uh, 2024. But again, I I want to congratulate. Uh, every single trader out there, okay? I don't care if you just finished up your year one, okay? Or you finished up your year 30, okay? Congratulations, you made it another year. That's a, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Uh, any business, and there's very few businesses for the exception of literally gambling, right? Let, gambling, uh, sports cards, whatever the case may be, and trading that your day-to-day -day is tied up on money leaving and entering your account. No human being should ever mentally go through such thing. And this is why it's such a hard business. If there was no money involved, yeah, this would be the greatest business in the world, but it is. So if you've made it through your first year, congratulations. That's a big, big uh, step forward. Um, I tweeted something out about three, four days ago. I don't know why people were so emotional about this tweet. I had my personal experiences of this, and you could agree with it, you could disagree with it. I'm just saying this is my personal experience, right? So I started trading in the end of 1998. Let's just call it 1999. That was the start of the internet craze. Um, I had a great run, just like a lot of other new traders did. And I thought in my first year and a half, basically two years, that hell, I'm going to be retired in two years. Okay, the way this, I never thought in my wildest dreams, this market was going to uh, implode, the dot-com bubble. And that was the problem, okay? Even though my friends and I, and, and I, I still cherish my friendships um, to this day that I started with at, you know, Carlin Financial Generic Trading and back in 1999. Um, so the idea that we had this exceptional run 
but we had no idea how to trade. We didn't. I mean, I, I've never kept it the se a secret. Uh, all we did was literally take the top five strongest stocks into the close, and they would probably gap up another 10, 15, 20% every single day. I mean, for the majority of a year and a half, that's all we did. We knew absolutely nothing. So when the bubble bursted, um, I didn't make a single penny from 2001 to 2003. Not a single penny. I don't, I don't think I've had, I don't think I had a green week, let alone a green month uh, in, in between those two years. And it took me a long time, right? It really did take me a long time for that first three years, four years, five years to kind of get, you know, get over the uh, woe is me or, um, you know, get over the self-doubt, uh, get over the lack of confidence, get over the lack of process, get over everything that every single new trader is going through. By the time I hit like year six, year seven, I finally started having a little bit of understanding of what's going on. And like by year eight, year nine, I started, you know, seeing a lot more consistency. Again, now keep this in mind. I, I, I wrote that down, you know, I, I, I tweeted that out uh, three, four days ago. And some, you know, some responses were just absolutely uh, amazing. You, well, how can it take you, you know, eight years? It should take you one year. It should take you two years. Hey, maybe I'm just stupid, right? Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe, maybe you're brilliant. Uh, it did take me six to seven years to kind of figure it out. And it took me about 10 to 12 years to really kind of finally get comfortable in my own skin. I'm going, I'm in the middle of my year 24. It's going to be in, uh, in March. It's going to be 25 years from me. Okay. So it took me pretty much almost half my trading career to kind of really get to where I wanted to be. And now I'm finally at the point that I'm so systematic in my approach that everything for me is normal. Everything, everything is normal. Uh, it, there's nothing the market can do to me, especially in an intraday basis that I'm gonna turn around and go, wow, this is really startling. I don't have an answer for that. But that's, again, that's almost 25 years in the making. And my point to this is this, okay? If you had great success and you started in 2023, congratulations. You should be very proud of yourself. But guys, understand one thing. This was one of the best markets you could have possibly traded in the last 20 years. The NASDAQ, this is definitely one of the biggest years the NASDAQ had since 1999. Just, I mean, just put that into perspective, right? So it's not that what we did was so phenomenal, what all of you guys did was so phenomenal. The market was linear, okay? The market was absolutely linear. And unfortunately, again, this is where I always kind of always play devil's advocate and I try to open everybody's eyes to the real, right? Not to the whole euphoria, social media, rah, 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 we're going to kill it, we're going to do this. Yeah, that's great. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But the worst thing, and I've always said this, the worst thing possibly was to start your journey in a euphoric gear. Again, I started basically my journey in the dot-com era, and then it took me five, six years after that to have an understanding of what's going on. For those of you guys who started in 2020, 2021, remember, it was euphoria, right? What happened in 2022? It was a bear market and Nasdaq was down 34%. So it's not that what we did, okay? Not that what we did uh, this year was so brilliant. None of us did anything that was so majestic. The market made us right. Let's be all honest here. If you're a swing trader this year and you started as a swing trader, I mean, look at some of these moves. NVIDIA went up 240%. Tesla went up 100%. Some of these stocks were going up absolutely bonkers, okay? So it's not that what we did was so phenomenal. The market made us right. Matter of fact, again, I, it, it, there's so many little cute little tidbits and, 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 and valuable tidbits in that. Uh, if you Google, if you uh, YouTube Meyer Offen and Dan Shapiro, Meyer continuously said this throughout the video. It's not that we were doing anything right. The market made us right. And now the question is going into 2024, is, well, what happens next, right? Is it possible we have a spillover of 2023 and the NASDAQ goes up another 10, 12, 14%? Absolutely. But what happens if it doesn't, right? That's the point. What happens if it doesn't? What happens if we have a down year and the NASDAQ finally starts catching up to the, the, the economy, uh, the inflation talk, that rate heights, and I get it. There's, it might start cutting rates uh, sooner than later. But what happens, right? And isn't that the whole point of being a trader? I always talk about this every single video. Don't you have to be prepared on both sides of the market? And my question is, did you prepare yourself this year, right? Did you prepare yourself for a potential, hey, back test? Because think about this. Even if the NASDAQ retraces back 8 to 10% this year, we are still up net, net 40, 44% 
from, from 2023. It's all possible, guys. Everything is on the table. Did we think in 2020 we're going to be locked down for three weeks with a pandemic? Right? Everything is possible. But the key is going into this year is I just want you to understand if you were in year one and you actually did hit the ground running and you did wonderful, congratulations. Take that money, put it aside, take money out for taxes, okay, and hold it for a rainy day. Don't start buying watches and cars and all that nonsense, right? That's the spark you, you go later down the road, right? If you if that is your your cup of tea. If you're trading three to five years and it still hasn't clicked, it's okay, right? It's okay. And the reason why I'm saying that is everybody develops differently. Again, I, I'm, I'm confident to say there's something mentally wrong with me, right? I have, again, I've never been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic. I'm pretty sure I'm bipolar. I'm definitely a Gemini, right? So it takes me 95 times to go through something to kind of say, oh, wait, maybe that's the, the thing. So if you're like me, it will take you five, six, seven, eight years. If you're a genius, right? And you know it, you hit the ground running the first two years, three years, and you're really consistent. You're not only consistent, you're starting to make a, a living, not just making some money on, in the stock market. You're starting to make a living. That's a blessing, right? That's a blessing. But whatever stage you're on, whether you're in year one or going on year 30, look back, right? Go through your sheets, look back, not your profit and loss. Look back where you made your mistakes, where you made your your brain farts. Look at the, the stocks that really stand out and turn around and say, where could I have been better? Where can I have been smarter? Where can I have traded at better intervals, right? Where can I put myself in a position for 2024 that I can eliminate those mistakes? Again, this is for year one. This is for year 30. Every single year, you have to self-evaluate. And once you, you start identifying the areas that you're weaker in, those are the levels I promise you are not going to get better. Those are the areas you have to cut it out like cancer. Just cut it out and put it to the side. And I'll give you one little tip. I, I, I'll give you guys one little tip that I, I, I'm pretty confident to say, whether you're trading for 30 years or you're trading for one, this will help you for 2024, okay? The market expands in the morning. I've, I've said this a thousand times throughout the years that we've been doing this. The market expands in the morning, meaning that your highest probability of success on the previous night's research is going to be from 9.30, roughly to around 1 o'clock, right at 1 o'clock Eastern time. And then we go to dead zones, right? We go to dead zones and the channels contract. And a lot of times, you'll hear this all the time, a lot of times traders will have a really good morning and turn around and go, wow, I just gave back my whole day. The reason why you're giving back your whole day is people are positioning for the next day, right? The channels are contracting. That means you're not going to get the expansion. You're not going to get that next level of quote unquote chasers uh, to get your stock moving in that direction. Unless it's some really exaggerated random day that the market is just going gangbusters. Those, you know, those days do happen and, to, and, and afternoons uh, will make you whole. But generally speaking, okay, generally speaking, if you cut out afternoon trading, right? Afternoon trading after one o'clock Eastern time, you will notice a considerable bump in performance for the entire year, okay? And I, we've been saying this all the time in the webinar. Whatever setup you like in the afternoon, you're going to love it in the morning. So the afternoon, if, it's, if, the, if the pivot is good for 50 cents a dollar, the next morning is exactly the same pivot, right? It's exactly the same setup. That same move they just gave you 50 cents to a dollar can give you three, four, five, six dollars, depending how aggressive the market is. So just a kind of a piece of advice. I, I know I'm an idiot and all that stuff, but... You know, if you do kind of eliminate your afternoon trading, I'm telling you, you're going to see a notable increase in performance for the year. Just try it. Just try it for the first couple of months uh, and see if that plays out. That's one of those things I've been talking about in the last couple of minutes of omitting things that you can do better, right? Put yourself in a better uh, position uh, to succeed. So going into, you know, going into Tuesday's session, again, I'm just taking it you know, one day at a time. Um, you know, let's see where we are when the NASDAQ, you know, number one, uh, the sell-off into uh, Friday. Uh, again, it's very, very tough to turn around and be like, well, now it's a big deal. Maybe that was the top of the market. Uh, at least the one thing that we do know is this. You see how you see how Q's stopped at the 10-day moving average uh, after the selling on Friday. And again, I can't put a lot of stock into uh, the little bit of selling on Friday because nobody was around. Okay, just nobody was around. Again, it's just a, it's a scenario that you know did it really happen? I know it really did, but did it really happen? Right. So the one thing, the one area on the cues that we do have to watch for going into Tuesday's session because Monday the market is off 
is let's keep an eye on that 40750s area. Right, guys? That's the low of Friday's channel. So if the queues start building below 40750s, then yeah, the market will start the back test. Again, is that going to mean, you know, is that going to mean that's it? This is the end of the rally? No, it doesn't mean it. But, but for Monday's session, it, the bulls need to hold and need to defend uh, this 40750 level because if they don't, yeah, the bears are going to have a, a, a at least a swinging chance uh, to kind of, uh, you know, to kind of get their hands in order. If, if you guys remember on Thursday, that's why we were emphasizing on, t on Tesla. Remember we were talking about Tesla, watch the 10 day breakdown on Tesla, right? It was the same thing, right? So take a look, right? Tesla stopped at the 10 day moving average, right? We talked about this on Thursday's video and Friday it confirmed it and went down to the next support zone, right? We talked about the 4748 level. Look at the low of the day, 24740s. So if you do a mental screenshot, right? If you do a mental screenshot, right? Tesla stopped at the green line, stopped at the green line, and look where the queue stopped, right? Look where the queue stopped, right at the green line. So my point is if Tesla confirmed the 10-day and the queues confirmed the 10-day, it's exactly the same setup and the market could get a hit as well. So that's what I'm watching uh, to the downside. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of names still look very, very good. Um, you know, don't try to over, you know, overread it. Don't try to overanalyze or overthink it. The market, you know, they talk, they talk about, you know, you know, how the market does the first week is probably going to give you a clue what it's going to do for the rest of the year. I, yeah, I don't believe that. It's the same way as people talking about Friday. Don't trade Friday. It's the worst day. Friday's the best day because option expiration is on Friday. That means every stock, at least with the, that I trade in the mega cap technology, gets exaggerated. Okay, so it, there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, wise tale and myths going on in the market. Don't trade on this day. It's not good. Okay, right? Okay. Anyway, so that's that. So don't go read into it. Uh, again, guys, the message going into uh, this year is if you're still struggling and you're on year two, year three, year four, just remember everybody learns in a different matter. Everybody is going to develop, develop faster or slower. You're not stupid. You're not dumb. There's no dark cloud ahead of you. Maybe you just haven't found the process yet. Maybe you're just trading something that your experience level or your financial situation is just not letting you thrive. Okay, it's it's just sometimes as simple as that. And again, this is not a you know this is not a come you know come trade pivots with me. It's going to change your life. No, like I've been saying for years. Yeah, I mean pivots are damn good for the right person, right? For the right person. That's why I, I've been saying you know hey listen if you fit you know if you're if you're thinking about pivots, you know, try it out for thirty days. You'll quickly see if it's a right fit to you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but that's the whole point. Not everything is the right fit for every single trader. So don't get down on yourself, okay? Keep working, guys. Keep looking at charts. I always encourage traders, try to find every single, go through every single type of process. Trade options, trade equities, trade futures, trade forex, hell, trade crypto, do whatever, whatever your, your heart desires, but see exactly where you fit in. And one day, whether it's year one, whether it's year two, or maybe like a schmuck that I am, maybe it hit me, finally hit me year six, year seven, right? Maybe eventually it will click. But until that does, guys, do not beat yourself up. This is totally normal. The pro progression is going to be organic. Don't let somebody on social media say you have to make it work within the first two years or you should quit. If that's you, that's you. That's fine. If you quit, you quit. That's that's all everybody's individual uh, journey. But I I'm telling you from my experience level, from, the, from what I've seen, uh, from what I've seen with my friends, everybody will develop at their own pace and make sure just keep on working. Uh, start omitting. Again, if you got through year one, start omitting bad habits where you know your deficiency levels lie. And the most important part is concentrate, have faith, things will click. Let's quickly go through Friday's session. There was only two pivots, right? As you can imagine. And we talked about both of them we talked about both of them on the night before, right? Uh, you know, again, we talked about Tesla on Thursday's video. If it lost the 10-day, well, it lost the 10-day, uh, 252.71 if it builds below from flush. Uh, here is Tesla, right? Here is Tesla and lost the 10-day moving average, got all this and went right to the next support uh, into this 247 level, which again, which is going to be very, very important in the next couple of days. Uh, the other one was obviously NVIDIA. And again, it keeps on getting rejected off that 500 level, guys. Look what, look what Friday's high was, right? Friday's high was literally 499.97. So this 500 level is going to be absolutely huge uh, for NVIDIA to come. So that's it, everybody. That's it. Um, again, I want to welcome all the new folks uh, who are joining us, who are uh, coming aboard for the next 30 days to kick out, uh, to uh, test out, kick the tires, of the PS60 theory. Some of you guys are going to absolutely love it. 
And some of the guys just, hey, it's just not going to be for you. And that's okay as well. The most important part is grow at your speed, grow at your own time. Guys, God bless everybody. Happy New Year to everybody. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay blessed. And I will see you in 2024. Take care.